started a thrust in tourism and related services with doing an amazing amount with very little. Before 2004, Mr. Speaker, there was one international weekly flight flying into this country. One. There are so many now that I even forget. Back then, Mr. Speaker, let me just say, in the last five years, we've had a 200% increase in cruise ship arrivals. At the same dock that was built many years ago, but was empty for so much of the time. Mr. Speaker, this government has spent money well. <laughs> it's funny you mention hydrofoil because I was going to speak about a marine issue because we also spent $37 million. Some of it, some of it, some of it on concessionary terms from a friendly government on fishing complexes. And I understand one more to come soon to go to Nevis. I haven't had the latest report on that, but I gather that that is on the way. But you mentioned something about hydrofoil just now. And I, I'll be surprised if that is not in this report. 4.2 million US dollars, Mr. Speaker. 42. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now he's joking, making. 42 million US dollars, Mr. Speaker. 100 million EC dollars. Yes. Part of the debt, repayment of the loan guarantee for hydrofoil boats that was secured previously by the PAM led administration. Large vessels that went missing, up to now they can't find and up to now they can't find them. And the Italian government, uh, the bank involved, which was, a, I think, a national a government bank, imposed the guarantee, call on the guarantee, call on the guarantee, and this government had to pay off $100 million over the last several years. Mr. Speaker, I, I, I am, in, I am, you know, 42 million U.S. dollars. What? 42. That was part of the tourism strategy back then, Mr. Speaker. That was part of this. That was supposed to solve the Liat problems of the region back then. I wonder if Liat has spent 42 million U.S. dollars since. Mr. Speaker. I, um, I seek your protection again. Um, your colleague is louder than I am. Mr. Speaker, we have, a <clears throat> we have a duty to perform. This government is put in place as recently as six months ago to take care of the affairs of this country. <coughs> This government has been put in place to carry out very important responsibilities, Mr. Speaker. This government is proud of what we have achieved. This government has no regrets about how we have spent the people's money. But where there was learnings to be had, they have been had. Where we made mistakes, we acknowledge it, and we move on, and we get better at what we do all the time. Yes. We are the best. We will continue to do what we have to do in terms of bringing this VAT to fruition and using it, the revenues from it, in ways that will, in fact, build a more sustainable economy with more and more of our people enjoying the fruits of labor. Mr. Speaker, I am very much in support of this bill. It's 150 pages. I, I have never read a bill this long. 
I actually read it from cover to cover. The amendments, Mr. Speaker, uh, the proposed amendments, it means the, 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 the committee stage is going to be quite significant. Sorry for the Attorney General and his team. They have worked. I also want to say that the, the, legal, the, the legal draftsman and his team and the Attorney General and, and et cetera, they, they have had their work cut out for them. This is not, this is not play time. This is not child's play. This has been hard work. To achieve what has been achieved to date so quickly could not have been done without the support of all of these people. The folks from Care Attack in Barbados who have been helping to train and advise and so on, I hope they understand that it's not everything that they say that we, we, we agree with exactly. I used to be asking, well, who is this car attack? It sounded like a, a car jack or something. <laughs> but I learned who they are. And it's some very influential and high quality experts who have been part of the equation in terms of the consultation process. Mr. Speaker, there is no government that has ever been more consultative than this one. Right. As we were sitting here today, People were texting and giving advice and inputs on matters including legal drafting. There are dozens of people out there. There are dozens of people out there who want to see this VAT system successful. Not just for political reasons. There are business people out there who understand what this VAT system can do, who understand that there's a need for tax reform and that this is a big part of that. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm confident. I'm an optimist normally. I have some concerns, particularly how we manage it within government to make sure that we do it without it becoming too bureaucratic that we maintain our quality of service to every business, small and large. Sometimes our people in government disregard little people when they come to them because they're a little business and they become, they see them as a nuisance. We have to give the best service to every person, every business that wants to get registered as within the VAT system. Forgive me if I'm not using the right terminology. The more that get registered, the more effective the system is. Some of those that fall below the threshold will actually find if they're well organized, if they're progressive, if they're well organized in terms of their accounting system and they want to grow and they want to be a successful business, they will find that it will be to their advantage to register. And I think that you will find that as a result of that, the business community will become more competitive. They'll become more lean and certainly more knowledgeable about their own business and hopefully more knowledgeable about their customers and consequently more competitive. Because in the final analysis, VAT or no VAT, income tax or no income tax, whatever tax you have, in the final analysis, the success of this country is going to depend on our global competitiveness as a people as businesses and as a government with stakeholders in the NGO sector, in the business community, in the church sector, in the government working together and putting electioneering aside when we need to and putting our shoulders to the wheel when we have to. Mr. Speaker, I have no doubt that the people of this federation are most capable, able, and ready to go down that path. May it please you.